So hey guys, um, this is like the second video I'm doing about this. Um, I started building this like Egyptian themed ride and like, so I already kind of built the structure, which is this pyramid exterior. And like right now I'm trying to work on the inside. So I'm trying to build like this kind of quick little temple room because I want it to kind of look like, like, you know, the people have been like examining the site. have been like in here for a while. So I kind of tested some that things out I put some statues in there so I kind of wanted to put this cool scaffolding because like I never really use it unless it is for like an adventure type piece so I really wanted to try using it in this um, scenario so I put all the adventure pieces up like all the scaffolding and then I tried putting on um, all the hieroglyphics on the wall I definitely should have done that before putting up the scaffolding because that took forever trying to place it just right with um, the advanced move tools so this is kind of like the inside queue, like the first room, like when people would go inside. So I set it up like that. Um, this is right now trying to work on the lighting, which I really wanted to get like kind of this orange blue vibe because I feel like this colors really mesh well. I have like this idea of where like, the inside temples are always kind of like blue. Oh, right now I'm just putting some skeletons down just to kind of create some catacomb look and feel to it. And nothing too much, uh, just some rubble, of course, because it's an old temple. So, you know, there's going to be some rubble. So, cobwebs, which really kind of sp spruced up the place. Like, I don't usually go into this much detail my first run through, but I really wanted to kind of set the tone for the rest of it. So, I really did put a lot of detail into this room because what I usually try and do is do like a rough outline of the whole thing first, see how many props pieces I'm at, and then go back through the ride and add a lot more detail to it knowing the range of pieces that I am working with. So right now I'm just adding some blue light. I really kind of have this thing where I really, as much as I can, like to have lights in the room like it was real, kind of like a real like, like theme park attraction. So I always definitely like having like the lights in the corners. Um, definitely so that it can kind of like shine down. You can kind of like see it, especially if like I don't know, there's just kind of something kind of really cool about that. And also, if you have, like, one point where all the lights are coming from, it looks a lot more natural rather than, like, a bunch of lights circling the whole room, which kind of looks really off sometimes. If you're going for that, it's cool. But I definitely kind of want to feel like it's more um, source-based, as if there's a kind of hole that you can't really see, so it's letting light in. And um, same with the blue. So it's, like, blue with, like, the dark. So just, just to make it look better, not too bad. So this right here would be the loading bay. Oh, oh, we're back inside. Sorry, I recorded this a while ago. I'm still trying to remember exactly what I did. So, oh. Oh, for this part right here, um, I don't know if you guys have ever been on it, but um, in the Guardians of the Galaxy ride at um, Disneyland, while you're waiting right before you get on the elevator, they have like, the string of lights going everywhere. It's kind of this really cool sci-fi sequence. And I kind of want to try and do that here. So that first room I was just working on, once like you're done waiting in there, you got this flight of stairs where you see that coffin thing I just did, and then you come in here where there's all these lanterns strung across the ceiling. And I kind of wanted to sequence it so the lanterns were kind of like attached to this kind of rickety old generator thing, which is what I'm building right now. And like that rickety old generator is providing power to the rest of the lanterns. So, and there's a little bit of spark coming from it because it was kind of half-assed assembled so um the lanterns kind of blink out which i think adds like this really cool kind of effect because i definitely kind of want to feel like there's definitely a little bit of activity going on in this temple and it's not completely like abandoned so i think the flashing lights definitely give it that kind of vibe up oh, there's the sparks it also kind of shows that like, it's definitely a recent setup and like it hasn't really been fully excavated this whole temple so the um the setting up of the timing of the lamps took so long. Like, just trying to figure out like, what the right times were, what was too long, what was too short, um, what looked too synchronized, what looked too random. Just kind of finding the right balance to make it look, um, I don't want to say natural, because I have no idea what these type of lights hooked up to a generator would look like. That would shoddy, but feels more natural. Also, these lanterns are gas lanterns, not um, electrical lanterns, but like, you make do with what you got. Um, yeah, so that's definitely what this scene was about, because it definitely took a really long time, and it's, it's, it's like that fun to watch. Oh, look, we're back to cool lighting effects. 
I like doing those to bring some more hieroglyphs up. Just kind of, like I said, like I do really wanted to give a lot of detail to that room just so kind of I can kind of set the preface, the preface to the rest of the attraction. Just to kind of know what kind of tone and what kind of level of theming I'm going for. So the hieroglyphics on the wall, like something I've learned from previous things, that you don't want to put all the hieroglyphics up one at once because then you'll hit your sit your um, piece limit really quickly. So like I always put up like three and kind of like a weird mism- mishmash kind of just to kind of give to kind of, you're trying to sell the idea. You're not trying to actually sell the product. So you're kind of just selling the idea that there's all these lanterns up there. So all these hieroglyphics up there when there's just like three maybe four so like there's three there because it's definitely an organized thing also i always try using the biggest ones because they definitely have the most like impact like the small ones i feel like get lost in the in, like the wall texture really quickly so before filming this i kind of laid out the rough outline of the ride like some for some rooms just to because that's what i like doing is like like setting up a basic idea just to kind of know the layout and the map and the shape of everything and then build around that um I don't know why, it's just the way I work, and then it also kind of is like, well, it's like, it kind of gives you, like, it kind of tells you what you're working with. So this is me extending the track out to the back, uh, you can see the pyramid briefly for a second. I should have gotten a better shot of that. So, yeah, so that's what that was. So, um, this is me building out, I had to flatten out the mountain, of course, because, because you just, you just have to make space. So, I'm building more of the inside of the room right here. Um, so what happened was before, so I have that room right before where I kind of want you going through some traps. So you went through some traps and now you're just, and then the people would be going into this room right here, right before this big throne room setup I had in, like, in my head. Cause so I always think, um, I really like the pause feature in rides. I don't know why, I kind of feel like when you stop, like especially in like, creepy rides, it really freaks people out. I feel like, so I forget what I was on, but um, there was this log ride I was on one time, and it's, it just stops, and then while, like, the log ride stops, and then um, like an alien jumps out and starts like slowly walking towards your car, and it's the scariest thing ever. It's like you can't get up, you're stuck on this log, so like you know, on a water ride, and then like once you got close enough to you, like your raft like dropped down a little bit, and you got really wet, but it was really pretty freaky like while you're there there's this really creepy actor in the suit which is like walking towards you and it was just it's just pretty freaky freaky oh so this is me um doing the lighting for um the inside of the temple room i had this like i really like the um, indiana jones queue over at um disneyland where they have um the spikes the spike room where you can pull the, the wooden beam and they all fall so I kind of wanted to recreate that in a ride just so you could kind of get the spikes going off which I think is um, a nice touch that the, uh, the Planet Coaster game has and I really like this pack like, I definitely use this pack way more than the other packs that they've released uh, spooky pack uh, it was good but they, they, I need a 2.0 I need a 2.0 spooky pack which I know we, we will not get so this is me doing the outline of the throne room. It's a big kind of moving to grab the ride. So like, I want the tone of it to be kind of like, so you're outside the temple that where you're waiting in line, and you kind of see like this whole archeology, arche, arche, archeological setup. And then you come inside, it looks like a little bit inhabited, and then you go through the ride. And the whole idea is that like, you're like, the first people to go through this cave. So you go through, um, you're setting off some of the traps by accident, and then you get to this massive throne room, and you kind of awaken the pharaoh. Because I wanted to do this, like, this really cool sequence thing for the ride. Which I think actually turned out pretty good. Um, it took me so long to figure out. Um, in terms of like trying to find the right coffin pieces, I do really like the coffin pieces from the spooky pack. Because I definitely like the color- colorization feature. Like They're not ideal, but they're kind of the best... I got, especially because they're animated and I didn't want to use like the wooden coffins for earlier parts in the ride and then change it here because I definitely want like a homogenous um, theme to the whole um, attraction. That sounds so weird saying that. Um, so yeah, that's more the constructing and detailing of the um, inside of the throne room. which. Looks really cool. I don't know. I feel like there's these kind of subtle things in like these pyramid buildings, which 
I didn't really like, use a reference for this, and I kind of wish I had, but the way it turned out is kind of like my idea of Skyrim. Oh, my game crashed, and I had to reload it. That's why we're seeing this. Yeah. My game crashes a lot. I don't know why, but if anyone has any tips for that, please leave them in the comments, as it would really help. Uh, just because I don't like my game crashing, and I don't know anyone who does. So this is the ride. Um... This is at night, uh, same thing. I think a part of it cut out by accident where I built the back wall of the temple. And so what happened was in that time, I just kind of completed building the surface area of it and added just some uh, like effect pieces and like some fire. And I think I just could, I could mess with the trigger a little bit. Oh, sorry, this is me editing the trigger right now because, oh God, trigger sequences are my enemy. They are my mortal enemy. I hate them so much. I love the effects, but programming them takes so long. And I don't feel like the system they have in the game is that intuitive, which is fine. But like, you can't complain. It's a really good game. It's a really solid game, which of course you can clearly see by my dedication to this. So after the whole throne room where all the, the zombies, sorry, not zombies, mummies, out of their tomb and um, kind of awaken. I wanted the person to go into this kind of hallway where you kind of see all these um, zombies lit because there's this really cool effect that the lighting does in Planet Coaster where if it's backlit, it's like this really kind of creepy silhouette and I love using it like as much as I can. So that's what this room is going to be and like you can't do that like, with natural lighting like I talked about earlier how I like doing that because just the way the physics work in the game it doesn't let you do that so you always have to put a light like, way behind them and then they're backlit that way which is just, which is a super cool effect like kind of breaks my lighting rule but it's totally worth it i feel like especially for the effect it gives so see there i'm doing the green light which is really cool and also for this room because there's just there's just a lot of orange in the throne room a big chunk of um the editing got cut out which because I told you it's like it's really glitchy my um, computer and I don't know why it keeps cutting out when I try to record sometimes but I'm definitely gonna try and work on that and fix it but um, back for this room the first room the throne room is like kind of orange like in terms of lighting and theming but um, this one I kind of wanted to offset it just a little bit if I could to more blue and like a little bit of green just to kind of I feel like that kind of sells that it's underground with the lighting uh, or at least like under something so this is another room where I want um, the sequence where after you go into the, the hallway room, you kind of come to this like crossroads section and there's this door and the door slowly opens and there's all these zombies there and then you kind of take a sharp like 180 degree turn back into this other hallway that's like going to be kind of dimly lit so that if you're on the ride you wouldn't really see it and I definitely want to tilt the huntsman car so that it looks more at the door than um, at the actual exit that you leave the room out of. So um, that, this is me right now uh, constructing the back part of it where the um, mummy animatronics would be, which eh, I definitely want to come back. Like how I said originally, like you kind of go through it once, just to kind of get a rough layout of everything, and then go back through it with um, like a really kind of precision. But that's like kind of when you start doing the trigger sequences. Besides the throne room, I really need to work on the triggers for all this ride. So like the triggers, and then you kind of go through like, the details. Cause, um, if you have like 2,000 pieces to spare on this one site, you might as well use them because get your money's worth, I guess. So, um, definitely, or even if like, you don't come close to 4,000 pieces, like, I feel like the main per point of it is to kind of sell the effect. And this isn't like a main ticket attraction. It'd be like a side one where like it's next to like a big one. And so this is going into a park that I'm currently building where I kind of want to have all these different um, lands circling an island, kind of like you think about Epcot with all the countries or like Isles of Adventure. So it's kind of like something like that where it's kind of circling. So this would be, I know this is like really not like historically accurate, but this kind of like ancient civilization area. So there's this other ride that I already put here in this area um, a little bit to the... Um, to the uh, right of the pyramid where it's just kind of this old um, like 
Aztec Indian mishmash temple thing. And it's like a roller coaster ride where that is like like a mega like e-ticket attraction. And this would be more like C or D or just somewhere in that vein. Definitely not like you're not you're not getting like a front of the line pass for this ride, but it's something to kill the day when the lines get long, I guess. Is what I'm trying to say. So that's definitely kind of the vibe I'm going for. So I don't think it'll hit 4,000 pieces, but it might come pretty close. Especially because um, when I first designed it, I designed this kind of like quick little queue up front. And I definitely want to go back and um, fix it just to add more detail to it. Um, just because I, I guess I like doing that. So right now, um, this is kind of towards the ending. I have really no idea how to end it like the last room i know i want to have like a little bit of trophy in it but what i ended up doing which you'll see in a little bit is for the exit i put it underneath the track and you go into this whole like kind of trophy room and then you exit the attraction walking so kind of like the whole journey like the journey isn't on the ride it happens while you're in the line and then walking off which i don't think enough rides do so i think a lot of rides like it's kind of over when you get off but i really kind of like it when i'm it's never really over. You're always still on, like, um, Horror Nights. If you've ever been, especially the one in Hollywood, you'll get out of the maze, and then, like, maybe, like, 20 feet from the exit, they'll put someone who was in the maze there to come out and scare you. It's like, you think you're done, you think the experience is over, then BAM! Ghost got you. So, I definitely kind of want to want to go with that with this, but I get a more, like, sophisticated ride sense. So, I don't know why, but my, uh, roads were being really 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 messy when I was trying to um, configure it so what I was doing was um, I was just kind of trying to play with it see what would work see what, would, what wouldn't work and then um, build the room around that which is kind of how I came up with this idea to have like this whole trophy underground room because I think it kind it really does kind of sell this whole homogenous um, experience to the Planko people so that's the last part I worked on, which I guess is um, pretty good. So what I did here is I also hate working underground, so it went a lot slower. So um, I'm just putting the walls up because always the first step, I feel like, you know the space you're working with and like know your limitations. And then I also feel like when you see the room shape, um, it, you can do a lot better job at kind of like getting these ideas, like what would go in this room? What would this be used for? what would look cool if I was in this room in real life like how would this work I definitely kind of want to go I definitely that's how I kind of approach like these rooms it's like I want I know I need this many rooms to kind of create this full, full experience but um what should these rooms be so I while I was developing I came up with like the trophy um, room idea and I definitely didn't get that many pieces in as I'd like to in this video but I definitely came well I'm gonna come back and continue doing this and um, just kind of really, really heavily detail everything and just really kind of sell the whole experience home. Definitely add like a lot more trophies, a lot more treasure, a lot more um, hieroglyphics. Just, I was putting them down now, like just to get the idea across and then later come back if I have the pieces too, um, which I definitely do. And then I definitely want to work on the queue out front. Um, I do kind of like the zigzag for this because it definitely kind of sells it as a smaller attraction like it's something that Universal would do or Disney does with their um, Fantasyland rides they're just kind of out front they're not really that they're, they're lightly themed where they're not they're no Avatar or anything like that so um, that's kind of what I wanted to go for but then kind of seeing how the exit looks and seeing kind of how the tone of the ride is especially once you get inside the temple I think I might beef up the, um, the outside just to have a little bit more detail or honestly some sequences because I definitely want to um, I definitely don't play enough around with the sequence editor and I think if I start doing that that will really help the overall experience and vibe but also just something I want to mention there's these fantasy props where it's these little um, these little kind of pots and pans and they they are so underused they are so perfect for like any temple thing any like any kind of uh, like 1300s, 1400s, like ancient China, medieval, ancient Egypt, ancient Aztec, like whatever you're working on that's ancient, that the use those pots. Like they're so good. Like I really was hoping for in the adventure pack that we would get a lot more of those, but we didn't. 
which kind of sucks, but I hope they add more to it. And so I think we're running out of time on this video, so um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, tell me what you think I should do to finish the ride off, and see you all real soon. Okay, bye.